big story today. We we just we just found out that uh, Daniel Hale is going to be sentenced to 45 months in prison, which I believe um, maybe maybe I misread this. It's it's like th- it's like three years, right? Just about maybe, uh, or am I getting my math wrong? Uh, 12, 24. Yeah, it's like three years and nine months. It's over two years. Um, now, Hale, Daniel Hale penned a very wonderful letter, very heartfelt letter. Uh, it's very emotional. And in it, he describes his PTSD. He describes his depression. He describes why he he believes they have been exacerbated, and it has to do with his uh, time in Afghanistan and his time as a drone operator, not knowing whether he has killed a civilian or not. That's heavy. Uh, and uh, this judge, t- I took that into consideration. So writing that letter really, I, I think, helped the judge understand his perspective. Um, the prosecutors wanted nine years. They wanted a pretty harsh sentence for him. Uh, but Judge O'Grady considered the mental health implications. Again, I want to point out that this is the second case where someone has revealed American war crimes and is going to prison for doing that, which they shouldn't be at all. I, 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 Daniel Hale should be getting zero time in prison. He should be free. Um, he should be able to live his life the way that he wants to live his life. Uh, but it is nice to see, you know, and this is sort of incremental, um, it is nice to see that um, these judges are taking mental health into consideration. Uh, Judge Barrister in the UK took Julian Assange's mental health into consideration. Uh, Judge O'Grady in America is taking Daniel Hale's mental health into consideration. Um, so it is nice to see that the justice system is taking mental health uh, into consideration when making their decisions. I hope that is a norm within the U.S. justice system um, because for a long time, if you showed any sort of emotion, if you brought up mental health, if you brought up emotional strife, you know, they don't really take that into consideration and they kind of dismiss that a whole lot. So the fact that they're not doing that in this circumstance is is kind of nice to see. Um. The, the prosecution also sell, said that he, you know, they, they cited his self-aggrandizement, uh, me, me, meaning that he kind of sees himself in this big light, uh, right? That was something that they levied against Julian Assange, uh, saying that he's a narcissist. He did this for his own personal glory. And, you know, you got to really think, uh, people that reveal this sort of information, I, I don't believe that they're doing it um, to, to prop themselves up. You know, to go through that amount of strife, that amount of stress, that amount of, of, of vitriol from various different state departments, we're not talking about comment sections, okay? And, and look, I, I face scathing comments uh, in, in various – I mean, I talk about race, and I get a bunch of fucking white boys that, that call me cucks and all this other shit. And, and even that, I'm just like, all right, this is a bit much. You guys need to calm the fuck down. Um, and it just goes to show like their own insecurity and stuff. But e- but just dealing with that in the comment section is a lot for me. I cannot imagine having the entire fucking United States State Department troll you, which is what people like Assange and Daniel Hale and Reality Winner and Chelsea Manning have to face. Why would you want to face that for a little bit of fame and glory? But that's what the that's what they do when they don't have actual evidence. They go, oh, well, he's doing it to for for fame. Just to say, oh, well, he's disingenuous. Look, Daniel Hale had a hard time getting a job because of the because of the Espionage Act. And when he finally found a job as a dishwasher, he realized how shittily the, the employees were being treated. And then he tried to form a union and got fired. Do you know how hard labor organizing is? Dude, I put together fucking stand-up shows, and I stress myself out because I want to put together a good professional running fucking show. Organizing a union is infinitely harder than fucking putting together a show. You can't claim self-aggrandizement 
on people that do that. Do you know how fucking thankless of a job a labor organizing a labor organizer is? Holy fuck. You think we have statues of Eugene Debs and Mother Jones somewhere? Fuck no. We have statues of people that blow up countries or fucking stand up for racism. We have assholes like that on monuments. But, but, you know, we make monuments for them. Yeah, fucking thankless labor organizing is. And you're going to say that this guy is, is doing it for himself. Fuck off. You got nothing. That's why you're saying that shit. Even that is a flimsy fucking argument. So in court, they they showed that, uh, you know, uh, some documents revealing that about 40% of the people on any of these watch lists uh, are just Muslim Americans. That's all they are. They're just Muslim Americans. And the government wants to designate them as terrorists. And then they do, right? And then when they do kill civilians, they 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 just uh, what do they call them? Uh, sorry, I noted this down. I forgot it immediately. Uh, enemies killed in action. That's what they call them, EKIA. Enemies killed in action. So even though it's a civilian, and and Daniel Hale describes some of the civilians that have been killed, and when he realized that's what it was, he he personally couldn't handle it. Then they found secret documents, uh, ISIS documents, claiming that, you know, they're using Daniel Hale's revelations to champion, uh, to, you know, and championing him and, and, and all that sort of stuff. And it was just like, they're all just in internet complaints from their followers. That's all it is. And they're claiming that it's ISIS. So again, their secret revelation was fuck all nothing. And they tortured this poor guy who did the right thing. And, and even though he did the right thing, he's still in prison for the next two to three years. He's still going to be in prison. And people wonder why Americans can't trust the justice system. It's because America has a kill the messenger policy. And the Justice Department is a part of that. If this judge truly gave a shit, he would have said, you, you did nothing wrong. Acting out, of, acting out of your conscience should be something that's rewarded, not punished. And he would have let Daniel Hale go and live the rest of his days doing what he needs to do. Because the State Department are a bunch of liars. I have no nice way of putting that. I'm sorry if that's what you wanted. But I really fucking don't. They're liars. They're lying about Daniel Hale and wanted to put him in prison for nine goddamn years. He got three. It should be zero. Because they don't have a case. It's the same thing with Julian Assange. He's th These guys are going to prison for nothing. Obama has a kill chain, man. They murdered civilians. That's a war crime. And Obama gets to go and fucking make speeches to, to banks, live in his tacky fucking house, and come out and shit on the Black Lives Matter movement, have phone calls with LeBron James, and Daniel Hale is going to be in prison for three years for doing the right thing. Do you get why people don't think this country is 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 honorable or the greatest fucking thing? Do you get why people call America a failed fucking state? When people revealing war crimes go to prison, you are not a legitimate country anymore. This is not a legitimate justice system. It's a goddamn farce. That's what it is. I'm going to read the last couple paragraphs of, of his letter um, because I think they're important. So here's, here's the, I would, I would very much urge you to go and read the letter itself. It's, it's pretty eye opening. 
Uh, so this, is, this is the conclusion of his letter. He says, Your Honor, the truest truism that I've come to understand about the nature of war is that war is trauma. I believe that any person either called upon or coerced to participate in war against their fellow man is promised to be exposed to some form of trauma. In that way, no soldier blessed to have returned home from war does so uninjured. The crux of PTSD is that it is a moral conundrum that afflicts invisible wounds on the psyche of a person made to burden the weight of experience after surviving a traumatic event. How PTSD manifests depends on the circumstances of the event. So how is the drone operator to process this? The victorious rifleman, unquestioningly remorseful, at least keeps his honor intact by having faced off against his enemy on the battlefield. The determined fighter pilot has the luxury of not uh, having to witness the gruesome aftermath. But what possibly could I have done to cope with the undeniable cruelties that I perpetuated? My conscience, once held at bay, came roaring back to life. At first, to ignore it. Wishing instead that someone better placed than I should come along and take this cup from me. But this too was folly. Left to decide whether to act, I could only do which I ought to do before God and my own conscience. The answer came to me that to stop the cycle of violence, I ought to sacrifice my own life and not the life of another person. So I contacted an investigative reporter with whom I had established a prior relationship and told him that I had something the American people needed to know. He had a crisis of conscience and he acted on it. And he didn't sell his country out, didn't sell out the military. He told the truth that America commits war crimes and it uses its poor uh, its its um, poor and economically disenfranchised populace to do so. And for revealing that information, he is being punished by going to prison for three years. Hey, thank you guys so much for checking out these videos. If you enjoyed them, please hit the like button. Please make sure that you share this out. And please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, especially if you're watching this on uh, YouTube or Facebook or something like that. Please do make sure that you are subscribed because they unsubscribe and unfollow people from my page quite often, uh, which is very frustrating, as you can imagine. Uh, and please do make sure that if you enjoy it, share this out because sharing is a, is a huge way uh, that you can help independent media fight back against the censorship and the suppression that we face on a pretty consistent basis from big tech. Uh, I've got live shows coming up, guys. Live stand-up comedy events are back. They're back. I'm so excited about them. Uh, August 14th, I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the Irma Freeman Center for Imagination. September 17th, I'm at the Art House Projects in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. September 30th, I'm at the Bardstown Lounge in Louisville, Kentucky. October 6th, I'm going to be at the Robin Theater in Lansing, Michigan. October 7th, I'm going to be opening for Ron Placone and Graham Elwood in Cleveland, Ohio. October 8th, I'm going to be at Trixie's in Detroit, Michigan. And I'm adding shows pretty much consistently. Uh, I'm not touring as heavily as I was before. But I am adding um, several cities to this tour date, so please make sure that you stay up to date with what I'm doing uh, and when I'm coming through your town. The best way to do that is to go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, that's where all the details are going to be. That's where all the ticket information is going to be. That's where you'll find out when I'm coming to your city uh, in the near future. I'm booking dates all over the place, so uh, and I'm very, very excited that these live events are coming back. But I'm also going to be doing virtual shows. Uh, they're going to be less frequent, but I will be continuing to do those virtual shows as well. So don't worry. We're going to be doing some virtual shows coming up. Uh, I'm also going to be putting out a new Forkful of Noodles content as well. 
Uh, so don't worry, those those things are not going away uh, just because the, 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 the live touring is, is back. Uh, but again, you can go get all that de uh, information right on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H. M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. You can check out all my stand-up comedy albums there, past videos. You can make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member, which does get you free tickets to both live and virtual events uh, You know when, when I come through your town. So uh, be sure to check that out. Thank you for your support, and we'll see you next time.